On today's episode of Locked On 76ers, Keith and I talk about did the head coach, coaching staff, give us a little bit of a hint of what the rotation may look like in that second game against the Cavaliers as we get ready for a home and home against that same Cleveland team beginning tonight. We discuss it next right here, Locked On 76ers. You are Locked On 76ers, your daily Philadelphia 76ers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, you are Locked On 76ers. I'm Devon Givens from 97.5 The Fanatic Radio in Philadelphia alongside my co-host and partner live from Cleveland as we get ready for the third preseason game for the 76ers, a home and home with the Cleveland Cavaliers, second consecutive game with them. Sixers beat right at the inquire.com. Keith Pompey. What's up, Keith? How's Cleveland? Uh, it's all right. It's all right. I mean, you know, people here are salty because they lost again the football team, but it is what it is, bro. Don't be out there rubbing it in, man. Don't nah, don't be out there rubbing it in. Nah, I didn't rub it in, but I saw a lot of brown though, like <laughs> brown, like brown and orange. <laughs> that was actually an interesting game, but I was surprised they lost that game. Honestly, the way that game was playing out, I thought they had that one in hand. But uh, that's for the uh, Locked On Browns podcast. If they want to get into it, what? Nah, all right. But I'm gonna tell you this: you should have seen the, the Locked On uh, Chargers podcast as I was leaving the airport. Me and you was on the phone, right? Yeah. But I was leaving the airport, like I saw like the Chargers going to the airport. And I was like, yo, how come y'all ain't going like where the regular people go? <laughs> but like they had like they was it was crazy. It was crazy. Yeah, interesting win. And look, I, I thought Cleveland as it was playing out, I thought it was gonna be a good win for them, but the better team eventually prevailed. Uh, in the end with Los Angeles doing their job. So uh, we got to thank everybody for making Locked On 76 is your first listen every day on this Monday and every other day. And remember, Locked On 76 is free and available on all platforms, including Locked On 76 is right here on YouTube, as always, here on Locked On 76 is Keith. Well, uh, another game tonight, not a big one, but just more of a third game for the Sixers to see where they are. Uh, get some work in before the start of the season. We are now just about, uh, what, eight days away from the start of the season. Man, that got here fast. Eight days away from the start of the season as Cleveland is the next opponent. Wednesday will be the Charlotte Hornets back here in Philadelphia. That will be the preseason finale uh, to find out where this team is and as far as the roster goes because a roster move was made today. So we'll look at the rotation of what it could potentially be based on what we've seen thus far through two preseason games. The uh, Sixers waived a player. We need to talk about that, a little bit of an injury also. And maybe if we have enough time, we'll talk about the Golden State Warriors, Draymond Green, Jordan Poole situation also that uh, is just never ending at this point. But Keith, uh, the game tonight for Cleveland, Sixers had practice on Sunday afternoon. There was a media availability. I could not be there with you guys before leaving for Cleveland. Before we get to everything, what did Doc Rivers have to say about the uh, rotation when he talked to the assembled media? You know, I mean, he was talking about, you know, someone asked him or or Gina Mizell asked him. She said, you know, Doc, like, uh, you know, right now I know your your, your rotation is, you know, changing. It's going to change a little um, throughout the year. But are you close to having that rotation? And he said, nah. Not yet. You know, we're going to have to have some practices. We're going to do this and that. That's what they all say, right? You know what I mean? That's the coach. He's supposed to say that. He, you know, he doesn't want to say, oh, yeah, we're locked and loaded. Yeah, this rotation. yeah you got a coach speaking. But the rotation that I saw this past game now, maybe he he can put Matisse Seibel in there, mm-hmm. right, in exchange for Daniel House. But the rotation that I saw, and, and then, you know, um, to me is the rotation that we'll probably see. I feel comfortable with, or I think they do. And in, in the second unit, um, the, the 70, we all know who the starters are, right? So in the second unit, the first two guys off the bench were DeAnthony Melton and George Niang. Okay, good. Then the next, then after that, it was Shake Milton and Daniel House Jr. And then Paul Reed. Um, was the only, uh, well, the only other uh, rotation player to play in the in the first half. 
Now, outside of that, the, the next two guys who came in in the second half, the first two guys off the bench in the second half were Montrez Harrell and Matisse Thibel, right? Mm-hmm. So when we talk about 12, to me, that looks like the 12 guys they're going to have. Because outside of that, you got Furkan, you got Julian Champagny, you have Charlie Brown Jr., Jr. Jaden Springer. Joe. Huh? Isaiah Joe. Isaiah Joe. Charles um, Bassey. Yeah, Charles Bassey. Trevlin Queen was waived, so nah, he's not going to be there. And Michael Foster Jr. is going to be waived uh, you know, pretty soon. He just got a camp deal. So right there, when I look at that backup lineup, the second string, I look at it like, okay, you got Shake Milton and George Niang, two guys who can get buckets for you, right? And But then you have Melton and Daniel House, two quality three-point shooters, and then you have uh, Paul Reed, who can run like a deer, can do some other things, a great uh, shot blocker, rim protector. So when we look at it, you got the blend of the two scorers mm-hmm. who aren't that good on defense, but then you have three defensive-minded players who are athletic and can do other things. You know what I mean? So, again, if you take Matisse Thibel out there and put House in, I can see that just right now when you look at House, he's a better three-point shooter than than um, Matisse. Matisse is a better defender. But right then and there, I think those are the two guys who could basically, you know, flip-flop. And and then, of course, you know, you got Montrez. But I think with – um. Paul Reed being a better defender, that's what you really want when you have that lineup. You need somebody that's going to anchor the defense. Well, I, I got to be honest, I was surprised because when we talked about this after the acquisitions were made this offseason and finally complete with the Montrez Harrell edition, the way I looked at it was just going for the next five, Melton, Thibel, Niang, House, and then Montrez Harrell would leap over Paul Reed. Now, that's what you have training camp for to work things out to see exactly where guys fall into place as far as the rotation goes. A little surprising that Shake Milton, number one, was elevated over Furkan Korkmaz, but the other part is to uh, elevate over Matisse Thibel because of his defensive presence that we know that he brings. So I thought that would be the necessary call for that second unit. Now, look, we're only in preseason game number three, uh, beginning tonight, and all of this stuff could change by the time we get to next Tuesday in the opener against the Boston Celtics in Boston, kicking off the entire NBA schedule. So while that's where we talked about them having a good problem, they have 12 players that they can go to. Now those next two are Thibel and Montrez Harrell. And then you mix in Furkan Korkmaz, who seemingly has already had a pretty decent preseason also through those first two games, especially game number one against the Brooklyn Nets. So I this is what preseason is for, as I just mentioned, for them to hash all of that out, for the players to compete against one another, to find out and figure out who is the uh, one that's going to have that particular day. And look, Paul Reed, as good as he has been, and he has been good through the first two games, getting that nod is big for him because it seems that he's getting the the uh, the trust. He's now has the trust a little bit and it's from his coaching staff and it's from his teammates, something that we couldn't say at this stage of his his season last year for this basketball team. So I always had him as that 11th or 12 man. Right now he's in that next five from six to 10. And I I wonder uh, how much longer he keeps it. He seems like he has improved in terms of him being uh, more trustworthy on the floor, not making as many mistakes, not gambling as much as he used to, uh, not picking up any cheap fouls. And I know it's only preseason, but it's a big thing because the backup to Joel Embiid is an important job for this Philadelphia 76 or team that you're not losing much of something when you step on the floor and he takes a seat. You're not him. None of them are him. Not even combined are they him when it comes to those bigs. You just have to be somebody that's steady, someone that the coaching staff can trust while you're out there to make positive plays and to be a plus and not a negative while out there on the floor. So I'm a bit surprised that Matisse Thibault and Paul Reed and even Shake Milton were in the in the first half of game number two and not Harold and Furkan Korkmaz along with Matisse Thibel getting the call. So we'll see how it goes tonight. Uh, we have to talk about Montrez Harold. We'll do so in the next segment because that could also, Keith, possibly dictate what happens with Paul Reed's minutes 
in Montrezl Harrell's lack of minutes. Let me say one thing, and and I mean, I just, you, you raise a great point, but I, I think the reason why we're not seeing Montrez Harrell out there right now over Paul Reed is because when you look at Montrez Harrell, I don't know from a defensive standpoint if you want to play George Niang and Montrez Harrell like extended minutes together. I mean, it just looks like, you know, both of them can go get you a bucket in different ways, you know what I mean? Like Niang's going to shoot the three, Harold's going to, you know, drive and all that. But on the defensive end, I I just feel like that's like, I mean, they're going to give up a lot more than they get. Like in the in that matchup, the pairing together, they're going to give up a lot more than they than they're getting. So I think when we see, I know it's, when we see B ball Paul Paul Reed is a lot to do with his defense, and and then that he can be a little serviceable. Because when you look at it, it's kind of like, you know, right now everything is going to be staggered, of course, right? So, like, let's just say if you have Tobias, you have uh, Melton, you have uh, uh, Tyrese, and then you have uh, Niang, and then you have, um, you know, you you have B-Ball Paul, so to speak. I, I just feel as if, like, right then and there, it's just one of those things where, um, you know, he, he you're being protected on the defensive end. And, and here's the thing. Let, let's be real. Like, the, um, some of the guys who started in the game on the first preseason game didn't play until the second quarter, I mean, second half. And you, like you said, you were assuming that they would be guys who would be out there. So Cyber, it could be. Cyber being Cyber, one of them. Yeah, Matisse Cyber. So it could be a horses for courses thing, like Brett Brown used to say. It could be a so, matchup thing. Yeah, it could be a matchup thing. But, but yeah, I, I can see why. But I can see why you might want to be a little leery of the Montrez, George Niang pairing. You know what I mean? The defensive yeah. end, they giving up more than they scoring. And, look, we know that when the season gets underway, the rotations as far as how many players come in at, one po- at, at the same time, it's going to be different. So, yeah, yeah we, we have no idea. But right now, uh, as we try to see who's jockeying for what position to get ready for the start of the year, everything can change in eight days before we get to game number one. But right now, a bit of a, a little bit of surprise there for me. Uh, an injury for the Sixers with Montrez Harrell that we need to talk about that you are reported. And also another thing that you reported, waving a player, Trevlin Queen. How surprised were you of that? What that means for the 76ers? We'll tap into that next right here on Locked On 76ers. Before we get to that, got to ask you, these days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. So if you're a small business owner and you want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available, that's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. That's right, LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. I know people that are business owners and they talk about how difficult it is to find the right people. And that's why I recommend them to LinkedIn jobs. Then, you know, when you're out there and you're looking for these right people, you have to make sure that you you, you find the right people for your business that's going to connect the way that you want. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can Quickly prioritize who you like to interview and simply hire. Uh, it's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. So we got to talk about how you finish the year strong and how the right team member might help you do that. We are at the end of the year 2022. You want to make sure you find the right one in there to do just that. It's easy to create a free job post on LinkedIn Jobs. So go in, add your job in the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you are hiring. So when people are out there creating these jobs, again, add purple hiring hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you are hiring. Very simple tools, screening questions, making it easy to focus once again on candidates with the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you like to interview and hire. That's why small businesses, once again, rank LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn jobs can help you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. 
Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NBA. That's right. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NBA to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Do it today, people. Do it today. Yeah, do it want to make sure that everybody has some 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 sort of job and some sort of income, and your uh, your 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 work is running very very smoothly by hiring these people. So get out there and check it in LinkedIn once again. Thank you for making Locked On Seventy Sixes your first listen. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Now podcast. Nightly recaps of every NBA game with analysis from our local experts is free and available wherever you get your podcast. Keith, you broke two stories. One, let's start with the uh, waving of Trevlin Queen, uh, a name that was brought up in the summer when the Sixers acquired him, signing him to a, a camp deal, non-guaranteed. We wanted to good, get a look, good look at the uh, G League MVP from a year ago to see exactly what he had. And Summer League showed some flashes, not a lot, but had people excited to look back at his highlights from his days in the G League with the Vipers, seeing what he did, the athleticism, the outside shooting, a 3 and D potential type of player, seeing how that might translate with this basketball team. And unfortunately for him, though, not enough time to show it, at least in the preseason training camp. I guess they saw enough. You reported that they decided to wave Traveling Queen. What does this mean for the Sixers roster as they trim it down now? I mean, basically, you know, if you think about it, like right now, you know, they needed a spot so they can start bringing in these guys that they want to w- get and wave on these, um, you know, these exhibit tens. But, you know, I, I look at Traveling Queen. I, I feel like that Traveling Queen kind of began the process of losing this job in the summer league shortly after the game. Because when you thought about it, it was one of those things where you look at him and we were saying to ourselves, like, oh, he's going to be a good a good fit. He's going to do that. Isaiah Joe hasn't been consistent. You know, it's going to be one of those things where Isaiah is struggling, going to have to struggle to make the team. Well, Isaiah Joe was basically like balling, like in the summer league. And again, you know it's summer league, but he was balling. And then from all you hear, you know, Isaiah Joe has been doing fairly well in training camp and all this other stuff. The first preseason game that they had, you know, Isaiah Joe had nine points and they all came on threes where he shot three for six. He had two assists and he had no turnovers in 17 minutes and four seconds. And two, he had two threes in the first quarter where they shot, what, 50 plus percent in the first quarter where he yeah. 42 points against Brooklyn. Exactly. But then you look at Trevlin Queen, right? So Trevlin Queen played four minutes, 36 seconds. He had four points. He was two for five on three, I mean, two for five shooting. He had, he was 0 for one on threes. Yeah. He had, he had three turnovers yeah. and, and one assist, right? So when you look at it, that small sample size, you know, he was a liability out there. And I think, I mean, he had more turnovers than made shots, right? So when you look at it, I feel like he made himself expendable, right? And now from what I'm hearing, it was like once they once they got that spot and they got uh, Montrez Harrell, it was one of those things where, you know, that's when he started to become expendable because, you know, the team needed an extra, you know, roster spot. But – you know, I, I felt like that, you know, it was always down to him and Isaiah Joe. And they, even when you were down in summer league, you know, you saw like Jay, Isaiah Joe, not summer league, but training camp in, in, in Charleston. You would see Isaiah Joe afterwards getting up shots daily with Furcon, with um, uh, Shake Milton, sometimes other people. And you, you always didn't see traveling, like, you know, doing stuff. So I feel like from not only the eye test, but if I'm a coach and I'm seeing one guy doing everything possible and he's out playing the other guy, it, it makes the job a whole lot more easier. And uh, there was also a corresponding move, correct, with the Exhibit 10, as you talked about, that looks like it might happen? Yeah, and, and they're probably going to have a lot of these guys. Not a lot, but you know what I mean, uh, some. And uh, I think Mac they already McClung. put it out there McClung. anyway, Mac McClung. Yeah, 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 Mac McClung. So, yeah, so the thing is, you know, this is also create spot for him where he can sign a deal 
and then get waived. And then all of a sudden it's kind of exhibit 10 to whereas the Sixers will hold his rights for the G League team. And if he gets that contract, if he stays on his seat on the team all season, he'll make more money doing that than he would with any other G League team. So basically, if he wants to get paid and he going to play, he going to play for the Blue Coats. You know what I mean? He's going to play for him. Yeah. So just for the people who don't know, the exhibit 10 deals are you sign with the club. There's really no spot for you on the NBA roster, but you stick around on the team in some capacity. And uh, that will be with the G League team with the Delaware Blue Coats, uh, who hosted the Sixers this weekend for their blue white scrimmage at the Chase Fieldhouse in Delaware. Uh, it's going to be they they uh, played uh, very well last season, led by head coach Kobe Carl. So they have more talent on the roster now. Mac McClung being a part of it, also. And uh, Keith, with that, uh, the injury you mentioned, Montrez Harrell. Uh, what's the term that you use for his injury that he has right now? What is it, intracoastal or something like that? Like, let's just say he inter, has a pain. Inter, intercoastal, inter, yeah, intercoastal. Intercoastal, yeah. Like, basically, what he has is, um, what he, what he has is, it's kind of like he has a sharp pain between like his rib and his chest or something like that. Yeah, so right. that's what he has now. From what I'm hearing is that the Sixers aren't too alarmed with it. You know, he's day to day. Um, but what it does do is open up an opportunity for Charles Bassey to shine, to show that he deserves to be on this roster. Before I, before Charles Bassey, I think it just continues to open up for Paul Reed, who already has the, the edge, it seems. And if he does, in fact, have that edge, based on what we saw in game number two, it gives him more of an opportunity to continue to, if he shows himself well, uh, stay in there because he wouldn't lose it with Montrez Harrell having some time off right now. Now, again, that could change from right now to game number one based on the practices before game one next Tuesday against Boston to kick off the 22-23 campaign. But I think it also helps Paul Reed just as much as it helps Charles Bassey. Yeah, I got you. But I also think that – I don't know. I keep going back to this, man. Mm -hmm. Like, when you look at the Sixers, they need defenders on the floor. And, I, and, I'll, and even with – when if you have uh, Tyrese and Tobias being staggered, you had James being staggered, and Joel's not on the floor, you need a rim protector back there, because if not, it's going to get ugly. So I I don't know. I'll be shocked. To be honest with you, I'll be shocked if I see Trez playing, but I'll be shocked if he the backup center unless you have something where Paul Reed is playing with him, and like they did when they closed out Game Two where they were on the floor together. But outside of that, I, I don't see that, man. I mean, just because of the other dudes where they're looking for scores, they got some defensive deficiencies. Yeah. Um, it, the defense, like we talked about on Friday's podcast about the defense and uh, how Joel and B mentioned on our station, 97.5 The Fanatic with Anthony Gargano about how he wants to be the best defensive team in the league. To your point, uh, that's a big focus of what they have to do in order for them to succeed in this this upcoming season and how good they could potentially be so we'll continue to monitor that what it means for the Sixers with montrez harrow out we don't yet know do we know if he's playing tonight or not he's or day to day man. day to day. day i mean i i don't, I, I, I like i'd be surprised I'd be, if you yeah yeah i mean he, you know, it's surprised. a preseason game yeah. yeah i'd be surprised if he plays give him some rest yeah you'll be back at it once again on on uh, wednesday against charlotte so I think for that one, give them some rest, get another game in on Wednesday, run through the practices before they start the regular season. So uh, on the other side, Keith, we need to talk about, man, tough stuff going on in Golden State. And they're the champions. <laughs> we'll talk about Draymond Green, Jordan Poole, and everything that has happened in the uh, last, I guess, 72 hours, really, with the Golden State Warriors, Draymond Green and Jordan Poole. We'll do that next final segment right here, Locked On 76ers. Before we do that, let's talk about Bet Online. Bet Online is your number one source for football betting info this season. Find all the latest player developments, team matchup, news, podcasts, and in depth articles and analysis on every game you can find. And as always, Bet Online remains your continued source for all your sports wagering information. 
with live betting and up-to-the-minute scores for every sport out there. The fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite games and events, including MLB, MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to betonline.net or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online, where the game starts. Do it today, people. Definitely do it today. Yes, indeed. Do it today. Well, I don't know what they're doing in Golden State, but they have some problems. Keith, we, we know about the whole story at this point. Make this one brief. Just talking about Golden State, Jordan Poole, uh, and uh, Draymond Green, whatever type of altercation they had. The video is released on TMZ. It looks really bad for Draymond Green. Saturday, he comes out with a press conference, and he talks about uh, how he apologized to Jordan Poole and his family, the team, the teammates, the organization, everyone involved, and uh, especially Jordan Poole and his family for how it's now that this video also has leaked out there that it makes things look worse and worse and worse every day. So um, just from afar, it, it's a, a tough situation. And again, you just wonder what's going on there when this is a team who just won the NBA championship. They should be getting geared up. And we know how emotional Draymond Green can be, who he is, tremendous player, future Hall of Famer, four-time with his rings, defensive player of the year. We know the resume. We know all of that stuff. And uh, for this to get to where it has gotten to, I don't know how they come back from this with something like that with Draymond Green going this far with this probably tops every other thing that has followed him during his career uh, in the NBA. What are your thoughts uh, on, from afar on just the things that we've read and, of course, seeing that video? I mean, it's disappointing, you know, but as far as me, like, let's just say if they start struggling, right, and you don't have Draymond, I see Draymond coming back. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, honestly, like, you know, like, I, I see him coming back because it's all about the wins. The thing about it is, like, you know, Draymond's a guy who's extremely emotional. You see him and the coach getting into it on the sidelines. So, like, him barking at a teammate at practice is not surprising. You know not what I mean? Well. But the thing is, it's like once you, like you said, you see that video and it makes you like, wow, wow. You know, the, the funny thing is, though, not funny, because so if the video didn't get out and then all of a sudden nobody would be saying what they're saying now. Right. And and then the boy would be like, yeah, we, we moved on it. That's my guy. Even though he hit you, knocked you down. Right. Almost knocked him out. I don't know if he knocked him out or not, but that was a nice that and my brother leaned into the punch right so anyway that's a big time so but it, it's weird how once people see stuff and then the whole narrative changes the thing that's kind of disturbing is it's like so once and this is weird to me the the punch wasn't really the problem right afterwards the problem was that the video got leaked it's like nah never mind that now y'all done told us that they're cool, they made up, they were sorry, there's no no other like uh, punishments. But then when the video comes out and all y'all were in there for the most part, then all of a sudden now the boys now now he says now he took a leave of absence for a couple of days. So to me, it's like, and I like the Golden State Warriors. They're one of the more straight up organizations, or if not the the best PR department in the league. However, it just seems kind of crazy to me, man, that like all of a sudden, once we see the video, the penalty is harsh. You know what yeah. I mean? So it's like, what, what else is going on behind closed doors? You know? Yeah, that was, that's what got it for me because yes, there was a, a report that came out that they were just doing their internal investigation because of course, none of them were happy. You see former players talking about how did they get out? He should he or she should be fired. Whoever uh, released this video, that's not the main story. Nah. The main story is the fact that what's on the video, and that should still remain the main story. Yes, you want to keep everything in house and you handle it, but were they handling it the right way? Would it have been handled? Would Draymond Green have had another press conference like this to talk about it the way that uh, he talked about it after the fact yeah, before this video was released? So. Uh, that's that's their problem but of course it's an nba problem as we all focus on this and that might even change how things are run now with all the other 29 organizations with in terms of the cameras and 
video in their facilities in, in this particular case and who is able to run these these videos in their facility so tough one for the golden state warriors they should be getting ready to try to defend their crown with no issues here they have an issue with two of their best players their top six players uh draymond green of course and jordan Poole. so uh we'll, we'll keep monitoring that as we find out new things and draymond is going to step away from the team to allow things to heal as he said uh in his press conference with um i guess the media on saturday keith we will uh check back in on tuesday tomorrow uh following the sixth or second preseason game we'll break that down we got to thank everybody for making locked on 76 is your first listen every day and uh now for your second listen go check out the ultimate pro basketball preview 2022 a six episode extravaganza to get you ready for the nba season your local team experts and the nba insiders of the locked on podcast network and odyssey all combining into one ultimate nba preview search for ultimate pro nba preview 2022 on your odyssey app youtube or wherever you get your podcast should be a uh, fun six episodes there for everybody to, uh, again to check into so we hope that you're able to do that hope you have a great rest of your monday enjoy the sixers game tonight and uh check in with us make sure you check in with us tonight tomorrow you know all that stuff and uh should be wednesday should be thursday fun. friday every day every day <laughs> every day so uh keith you mind telling everybody where you they can uh find us yeah, you like like my man said, wherever you get your podcast, you can get our podcast and you can also get us on YouTube, the Locked On 76ers YouTube channel. When you mm -hmm. go there, click on that Liberty Bell so you can become one of our one of our new uh newest subscribers. Also, you're gonna listen to my man D tonight. You can listen to D, he's gonna be on 97.5 FM. D has his own show, the Divine Giving Show. But tonight he's gonna be on there from six to midnight. Dang, oh, well. Man. Around oh, the Sixers game, pre yeah, and yeah. that's yeah. crazy. You overtime flow, overtime. <laughs> it's, it's that time of the year, man. The, yeah, the fall, once, cool. once we get to October, it's the overtime flow, man. Six to midnight on a lot of nights. <laughs> yeah, yeah, six to six to midnight, and then you can also follow my man D at Divine G nine seven five on Twitter. You can follow me at Pompey on Sixers on Twitter, and you can read my stuff in Inquire and by purchasing the Philadelphia Inquirer. Make sure you go out there and do that today, people. Do it Definitely today. do it today. <laughs> Thanks, man. Appreciate it. We'll talk to you tomorrow, man. Hope you uh, have a good rest of your Monday. I know you'll be at the game tonight, so we'll get a firsthand uh, experience, of course, from you tomorrow on the podcast uh, about the Sixers and the Cavaliers uh, on Monday night. Appreciate it, man. Have a good one. Appreciate you, bro. Peace.